In this short but informative video, we will hopefully debunk the myth that addiction is merely a bad habit and those affected simply lack the motivation to change that habit. We will begin by describing the system in the brain that processes emotions and drives you to seek rewards and avoid punishment. There are various brain structures that play a role in this system, but we will only focus on two to paint the picture, the NAC and the VTA. The NAC is involved in motivation, pleasure, reward, and reinforcement learning. This might already be telling of how this part of the brain plays a vital role in addiction. The VTA is a part of the brain that releases the chemical dopamine on the NAC and therefore modulates the reward-seeking behavior. Dopamine serves as a predictor of reward when a cue associated with pleasure is presented, like the smell or picture of food. The VTA neurons release the signaling molecule dopamine onto the neurons of the NAC to prepare you for the reward. Methamphetamine, or meth for short, is a stimulant drug. This simply means that it is responsible for an increase in dopamine levels in the parts of the brain that the VTA connects with. The spike of dopamine in the brain is linked to feelings of intense happiness and increased activity. Fast forward to chronic meth use. The brain cells are now adapting to the elevated dopamine concentrations in the brain. In turn, you are only functioning normally when meth is in your system. There is a developed tolerance to the substance. The cells in the brain are also beginning to take on a different structure that allows them to be excited more easily. This is called sensitization meaning the same dose of meth causes a more intense high with continued use. In addition, the VTA connects with a part of the brain that controls a wide range of cognitive functions, like attention and working memory, called the prefrontal cortex. Long-term exposure to meth and the persistent elevation of dopamine released onto the prefrontal cortex has toxic effects. This is thought to be associated with the impaired functioning of this part of the brain and therefore deficits in the working memory and attention.